Welcome to Get In The Mix. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the FL key, the world's first dedicated keyboard for FL Studio. It comes in two sizes, the Mini and the 37, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at the 37. The keyboard itself is split into four main sections, the pitch and modulation wheels to the left, some function controls to the right of that, the main section, the pots and pads, the foundation upon which most of the performance features are built, and to the right of that, some basic transport controls. Now, for the most part, the transport controls don't need explaining, but there is one that's worth talking about, score log. You can consider score log as a MIDI dump. Perhaps you were just jamming out a moment ago and you, you did the money take, that was the perfect shot, but you weren't recording. Well, fear no more because you just simply hit score log and boom, dump the previous five minutes of MIDI into whichever MIDI clip you're currently working in. The first thing we want to learn on the keyboard is how to lay down drums. Fundamentally, there are two different ways in which we do so. The first is in more of an MPC style drum playing fashion, and the second is via a step sequencer. I press shift and press channel rack. I have all my channel rack sounds laid out on the pads in front of me. I enable a metronome, arm my record, and press play for accounting. I can literally just play some drums. And as easy as that, we've got the foundations of a beat. However, that's not how I want to lay my drums down today, so I'm gonna hit undo to undo my recording. We're gonna make use of the step sequencer. If I hold shift and press sequencer, we are now enabled in step sequencer mode. This works much the same as most step sequencers out there on the market. Each pad represents a step, each set of steps represents a bar. You can navigate through the sounds you're controlling using the con channel rack up and down buttons and through the steps that you're looking at via the page left and right buttons. Simply hit a pad where you want the sound to play, hit it again to reverse. Let's pencil in a clap on the third downbeat of each bar. Let's put some accompanying kicks over the top. How about a snare to go alongside? Let's make use of the note repeat feature to lay some hi-hats over the top. If I hold shift and press my channel rack to go back to my channel rack setting and enable note repeat, we can hold a note to hear it repeated. You can dive deeper down into that by pressing shift and note repeat. Now we can control the parameters of the note repeat via the five leftmost keys on the keyboard. We can look at the rate modes of quarter, eighth, sixteenth and thirty twos and whether there's a triplet or not. Let's enable that and record some hi-hats over the top. Easy as that, we've got a nice hi-hat rhythm laid down. The next mode we'll take a look at is scale mode. If I press shift and instrument, we enter our pads into instrument mode, where we can navigate through our sounds. In this case, I'm gonna to navigate to my piano sound. You may have noticed that the pads have laid themselves out similar to a keyboard. We're not worried too much about that though, because we're gonna take a look at scale mode. Once we enter into scale mode, any keys that land outside of our scale are shifted to the nearest note within that scale. We can dive deeper into that to specify what scale type and scale key by pressing shift and scale. Now we have the scale type selectable along the pads with minor, major, Dorian, Mixolydian, Pythagorean, harmonic minor, minor pentatonic, and major pentatonic. I'm gonna go for a standard minor today and you, and we select the key of the scale simply by pressing the note that corresponds to that key. I'm sticking nice and simple on C minor. Now, as we play the keys, you'll notice that some of them double up because they're snapping to the nearest note within that scale. 
We can take scale mode a step further by pressing shift and scale chord and entering into scale chord mode. Here we're given a selection of chords within the scale that we're working at, launchable by the simple press of a single pad. We navigate through the chord types using the page left and right. Here we can see triads across the top, sevenths across the bottom, sevenths and ninths on the second bank, and ninths and six ninths on the third. There are two other chord modes we should take note of though whilst we're here. The first is fixed chord. If I hold fixed chord and play a chord, we now have that chord pitched up our entire keyboard. Really useful for that kind of classic house vibe. We also have user chord. Shift and user chord enters us into that mode. Here, we can choose a chord and assign it to a pad for instant playback. Simply hold the pad and play the notes. Easy playback of the chords that we've generated there. Now today, I'm going to jump back to scale chord mode and play those ninth chords over the top of my beat. Let's enable scale mode and move down and lay an accompanying bass line over the top. How about we combine the scale and note repeat features to lay an arc down at the beginning of the track? We'll take note repeat off and we'll lay an accompanying melody over the top. And just because no track would be self-respecting without a little vocal over the top, we'll disengage scale and we'll lay one over the top using Arcade. Nice. Now we've laid the foundation of a track, we can move on to the pop modes. Here is where we can take advantage of the hardware-based mixing options. Hard hold Shift and press Plugin gives us control over any image line plugin. Bear in mind, it does need to be an image line plugin and can't be third party. But if I navigate to my FL keys, we can now see that each of the dials controls a different parameter with an indicator on the LED screen. And of course, you can see that on your laptop. However, I'm going to reset that because I do want my uh, piano to stay much the same as it was. Next up, shift and mixer volume allows the pots to control the channel faders for our mixer. We can use this to do a basic mix down. If I zero all these off and then move along to the next section of my mixer, we can do a basic mix down. nice and easy way to get hands-on with your mixing. Shift and mixer pan gives us control over the panning. We can set a stereo image for each of our sounds. Perhaps I want to put my clap off to the right, my hat off to the left, my snare off to the left, and keep the rest of it quite central. Shift and channel volume allows our pots to take over control of the channel racks volumes. You can think of this as a pre-volume before the mixer stage. Again, just taking control of the pot correlates to the channel rack volume inside of FL. Shift and channel pan gives us control of the panning of each of those channel racks. Again, really simple way to get hands on and we can think of this as a pre-pan B. 
before the mixer stage. Hopefully this has given you a good idea of how the FL key works and how to get the most out of your new keyboard. As I said before, this is a world's first, so if you've been feeling a little bit hard done by by the lack of hardware for FL Studio, then fear no more because Novation have got you covered. As always, like if you like, dislike if you dislike, chuck us a comment in the comment section and be sure to subscribe and make sure to get in the mix.